Peace, love, and light family. This is Sister Toffee, creator of Online, where we talk about God's nature within your spirit. KMSC is an acronym for Kim, which is representative of ancient Egyptian spiritual self inner mastery, uh, Kemetic, which is a uh, I would say almost like a data communication between the divine and yourself. Also, uh, the science of it is the ancient Egyptian spiritual science, which you see here. These are the gods or the deities or the neteru or powers of God's nature that work with you on an unseen level to uh, manifest whatever it is that you are embodying at any given time and a channel is actually this location, meaning wherever I am on the platform, sharing with you what the divine is giving me. Uh, and then also me being a channel for the divine to use, to give messages to myself and the collective. Um, I'd like to thank all of you that have become subscribers on the channel right now. I think I have 28 and uh, that's, gr that's fine because eight and two adds up to a 10 and 10 is completion. So on some level, I, I do know that I am evolving and that I'm being used for a higher purpose. So I'm grateful for that. Um, another announcement I'd like to make is uh, if you're interested in learning more about my perspective on ancient Egyptian spiritual science, not the history of ancient Egypt, but the science of it, the actual science that um, the ancestors communicated with me and how they used this wisdom that was on the walls, that it wasn't just uh, a message to be left uh, regarding how their um, kingdoms were built or how they fell. It was more of leaving the science of the spirit, which we all embody. We're spirits first, and then we are in a human form to be used by the divine to affect positive change on the planet. And so that's what this science is about. It's about your original nature, your original divine nature. And so that's what KMSC stands for. And uh, dot online just means that I don't have uh, a physical location as of yet to serve because of Corona virus uh, and health concerns regarding myself and anyone that I may work with. Um, health, maintaining health is uh, the priority. So. Uh, I just wanted to mention those things and um, I wanted to let you know that if you'd like to learn more and study on your own, uh, you're welcome to go to the website at kmsc.online and you can download the PDF of uh, the Netra Correlation Chart. And there's going to be an alignment with Western Astrological Signs, um, Hekau, which are words of power, ancient Egyptian words that you can use as a mantra to call in the power of a particular uh, area of manifestation or netter. Um, also, I had another channel <laughs> that I still have on YouTube. I believe it's still up. And it was before I decided to do this uh, channel. This is after I actually legalized this business. Uh, it was called Spirit Talk with Sister Toffee. So I did a video then that I don't have now because it's on another computer that is no longer working um, on netter science. It was a very short video. It was a, in the very early stages of me studying the science. Um, that, that video might be helpful. So I'll try to find it and link it so that you can uh, watch that. Um, but if you'd like to, if you're a reader, whether you're an avid reader or not, it's a really short read. Um, I wrote a small short book that's on Amazon in the form of an ebook and also a paperback. Um, there are two versions. Um, the best description I can give are the colors of the covers of the book. One of the books is an olive green with a uh, mustard gold or mustard yellow um, lining, and it's under my given name, which is Denise Beeson. Um, I do not use that name unless I'm doing business. I consider that a, a, a business uh, transaction name. I don't use it because I have another perspective of names and. I have a different identity from what I was given. Um, I, I honor it, but I don't uh, use it because I'm doing something that for the divine. It has nothing to do with this dimension um, as far as it being 
de a derivative of this dimension is actually for me to be using um, a higher self to affect this dimension. So I do not use that name because it's a lower aspect of my being and I cannot channel in that lower aspect. I'm, I'm just as susceptible as anybody else to uh, being used by um, entities that are not necessarily concerned about serving the higher purpose of the universal powers. So I use the name Toffee because it allows me to step into my higher self. So uh, when you see the name Denise Beeson, uh, just know that that's the name I use for legal purposes. If I'm dealing with law or if I'm dealing with uh, something that consists of documents that are legal. Other than that, I do not use that name and I would prefer if you continue to call me Sister Toffee. Toffee is an Islamic name and it means one called directly by Allah. Yes, it is Muslim. Um, it was given to me by a friend of mine that has transitioned, um, Brother Abdullah Chief. Peace and blessings be upon him. Um, he introduced me to Islam and Islam has also expanded my knowledge of God as Allah. And I consider God all law. And these are the laws right here. And they're connected to the planets and the planets are the hubs. As you can see, they're here. I consider the planets governors. I don't believe they're just huge celestial bodies. I believe they are intelligent uh, forces, just like the sun is intelligent enough to continue to give us uh, the light codes that we need that actually uh, cleanse energy from our pineal glands. Um, if you've ever been in the sun and water starts to come out of your eyes, that's uh, sun god Ra or the energy of Heru in, in its fire form which is the Christian energy cleansing out impurity so that you can get a clear connection between the divine and yourself. They're clearing up your physical body, um, your energy body, uh, so that the vibration can be clear and that you can get ch channeled messages from your ancestors, spirit guides, uh, etc. Uh, those aha moments that you have, those are spirit guides, angels, or ancestors that are guiding and protecting you. You may not know who they are, but we all have them. Okay, and so... Part of your spiritual evolution is going to be you finding out what guides are yours. And it'll come through um, finding videos on YouTube that have a particular deity or a particular ascended master that keeps coming to you. Um, I've had uh, Tehuti, this card, come in many forms. Serapis Bay, Thoth, uh, which is Tehuti to measure. This is a... Uh, a deity of consciousness, uh, expanding consciousness uh, to the divine uh, template, which allows you to access all, all knowledge. <clears throat> the divine Father, Mother, God knows what you can handle, when you can handle it, and how well you can handle it. So our evolution is always incremental, and it's never everything, because they know we cannot handle it mentally, we cannot process it. <clears throat> so as we evolve, excuse me, we're going to have only portions of... Uh, like like uh, when we go to college or, or in grade school, you have assignments and you have uh, homework. You have chapters you have to study and then you take a test and you pass it or you fail it. And if you fail it, you repeat. And that's basically what it is. So this energy has come to me uh, several times, the energy of Jupiter, Sagittarian energy. Um, I redid my cosmic birth chart. Um, I, I don't know anyone that's doing that. Um, it's something you can do yourself, um, but if you're just not versed in this type of uh, evaluation process, then you can uh, contact me at T-H-E-N-T-R-U, the letter N, the letter U at gmail.com. I'll leave it in the description box. Um, the website has not been set up where there can be payments accepted. I have to contact my uh, host and find out how it, what I need to do. Um, I have a few options as far as processing payments and I have to figure it out. So please bear with me. Um, I'm trying to bug, uh, juggle both ends of actually providing service and actually taking care of the legal business. It's very difficult trying to balance both. It's me stepping into the spirit world and then back into the earthly. Very difficult. Um, and at this time I don't have staff that can work with me uh, because people have to be paid for their service. So, um, I'm going to keep pushing forward for us and for the divine. I'm going to keep working hard uh, to get things uh, balanced out where uh, 
purchasing services can be very easy and simple for you. But for right now, you can go to Amazon and you can purchase uh, the book. I haven't ordered my copy yet. I will. But it's called uh, Ancient Egyptian Spiritual Science uh, and the Mind of Christ. I'm sorry. Ancient, yeah, and the Mind of Christ is uh, the subtitle uh, for the uh, more expensive copy, which is $20. And it's, it's more expensive because I actually uh, selected a... Um, a higher quality paper uh, with more um, visibility. The words have more visibility on that particular paper. And um, it's just a higher quality book, meaning the, the words will be easier to read and the uh, paper itself probably is a higher grade than the other books. So one of the books that are paperback, which is the purple and pink one, is uh, it's the cheaper book. And it's not, it's not made, it probably doesn't have as much visibility as the, uh, the $20 book. But those are both paperbacks, it's the same book. And then there's an e-book form that's $9.99 if you have a Kindle or something like that. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Uh, yesterday, last night actually, uh, I did a spread for the month of April. And uh, the layout here... Uh, is based on each netter, which is a sphere zero through through ten. Um, in some of the areas, basically areas of manifestation, um, some of them connect to chakra, chakras that we're aware of, and others that are not. Anyway, these are basically conduits from which we manifest. The God part of ourselves is manifesting in tandem with the divine, and these are the aspects in which we manifest. So, I'm gonna. Uh, expand on these if you want to know what the original information was you're going to have to watch the video that i uploaded before this one i don't remember what the title is uh but it literally is uh, a video from march 17th so if you can look at the date you'll know that that's the video um i think it is a uh, guidance for april i'm not sure if i put april i think it's come back to love that's what it is because this would that's what the message was that I got. Divine is trying to teach us uh, how to love ourselves again, number one, uh, and to uh, remind us of what real love is. Uh, we've been uh, misled and confused about love, divine love, and divine is uh, bringing us back into divine order and balance and law of love. We're getting recalibrated back to what love is, really. And uh, so that people can quit uh, being hurt and harmed and, you know, um, unnecessarily traumatized because uh, they have a false perception of uh, value of self and self-love. And, and uh, so they do things so that they can uh, feel important. And a lot of times it means hurting other people uh, so that they can be looked at in a light that makes them feel loved. And so they'll hurt others. Uh, at any cost and uh, I do not hold them completely responsible I hold them partially responsible because the way that people become that way is they uh, they uh, they acquiesce to the whispering gin that tells them you know it's okay to do this it's okay you deserve it because dot 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 well they did this dot 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 or well this wasn't fair to you so why should you care that kind of thing those, those are the whispering gins okay and if you don't know what a jinn is, uh, this is uh, the name of a devil or a demon or a dark entity uh, well known in Islam. Uh, they talk about evil spirits or entities or the unbelievers that are connected to spirits that are uh, anti-evolution or spiritual expansion for uh, God's highest creation, which is a, the human being or the spirit being in human form. We are the highest form of God. And so uh, there are entities that are not like <laughs> the Neteru. They are uh, against the Neteru, and they are uh, angry and jealous, and they are uh, conscious entities that have thought. And they uh, are jealous of, number one, uh, these divine governors, because they are the elite of God. These are the elite. These are the first children or the first manifestation or aspects of father mother god i love them i see them like uncles and, and aunts they're so rich their spirits are so rich i don't just see them as a planet they're beings uh, 
they might have a circular form, but their consciousness is uh, unlimited. They are the governors of God. They govern human experience. And so uh, I don't think you can get higher than that. And I personally believe they work for the Christ, my master. So, and I don't see Christ as a man, okay? I see Christ as the spirit of life. Anything that is living has his essence. And the reason why I say his is because uh, it, male energy is what uh, contains the seed and the feminine energy brings it forth. And the Christed energy is all about initiation and action. And uh, putting the divine template of logic, masculine energy, and the creative force, feminine energy, in its proper place, which is on the foundation of love. And so the Christ is the enactment of the Father, Mother, God energy. The cosmic mother womb, the universe, and Father God is the potential and essence of everything that was, is, and ever will be. That's who I see Father, Mother, God as, and I see the unification of that energy as Christ. And I believe that the sun in the sky is the energetic embodiment of Christ, fire, okay? Will transmute and will uh, destroy. And then the mother spirit, which is the water, uh, starts to create the life again, bring it back into existence. Okay, so enough of that. I can go on a tangent because uh, I am so t connected with them. They'll just start, it'll just come out of me like a bubbling stream. So uh, if you hear anything in the background, as I said before in the prior video, please excuse it. The neighborhood I'm living in now is uh, quite interesting. There's a lot going on. Uh, people doing their jobs. And some of them fly in the sky. And others of them are driving to work and some of them have children. That's being a parent is a job. And so uh, if you hear anything that is disturbing, please, uh, I'm asking you for pardoning in advance. Um, again, for those that were, have been looking for videos on a regular repetitive basis, um, I just want to explain something to you. Um, although I am a creator on YouTube, um, number one, I am a spirit being that has a very close relationship with the divine. Um, my love for the creator is number one. I do not do anything without the guidance of the creator. Wow, what was that? You see that? Did you guys see that light? Did you guys see that? Did you guys see that? <laughs> there was something flying around. Uh, maybe that's an angelic spirit. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to watch this video again so I can see that. But um, am I perfect? Far from it. But I do my best to try to align myself with divine will. Um, well, that's what that is. That was a fly, a fruit fly. Isn't that something? Maybe that's because I bought a lot of fruits and vegetables the other day. And I had maintenance in here. The door was open. It probably got in from that. Let me open this window. I'm really hot right now, you guys. Hold on. It is really hot. Hold on. Open my, my kitchen window too. Just one second, okay? Thank you. Hope you guys are doing okay on this Sunday. Okay, family, I'm back. So, um, if any of you have any questions, you are welcome. I'm inviting you. You're welcome to email me at T-H-E-N-T-R-U, the letter N, the letter U, at gmail.com. I would like to hear from you. I am looking forward to hearing from you. I want to hear from you. It's not going to cost you anything. The only thing that will cost you something is to you go to the website and say, you want one of the services that are on the services tab. Other than that, I have no problem emailing and communicating via email. So please, if you have any questions, um, I don't know everything. I'm doing the best I can to try to uh, balance out both the logic and the practical. Uh, so if there's something you want to know that's of a spiritual nature or of a practical nature regarding what I offer here, 
feel free to email me. I'll leave the email in the description box, okay? Uh, so we're going to get started. I'm going to say a prayer, and uh, we're going to see what the divine brings in for us. We're going to expand on this knowledge, and you're going to need the, to see the original video in order to uh, find out what the original messages were, okay? So let's begin. Blessed Heavenly Father, Mother God, thank you for life today. Thank you for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your forgiveness, protection, guidance, and your generosity, and your never-ending love. I'm asking you for the grace that's needed for this reading to allow your divine will, your divine words, your divine purpose to come through, to remove everything out that is not of the divine that's within me and allow me to be a channel for this message for myself and for the collective. Please continue to expand and expound on this information that you've given us yesterday so that we can align ourselves with your divine will for the betterment of ourselves, those around us, and the collective. I thank you in advance, give you gratitude from my heart as my viewers and I ask you to provide what it is that we need to do, what is needed to be done, and to evolve, to align ourselves consciously, energetically, with what you desire for us to do, specifically in our heart space. Please protect this space, protect this reading. Allow the angels that came with me in my first, second, and third birth to come to this space. Allow the ascended masters to come in allow the ancient Egyptian ancestors to come in and to protect this space and allow divine will to be done. Let nothing that is contrary to your purpose and your will come through and allow this message to be complete and full. Thank you. Amen and I say. All right, so let's get started, you guys. I'm going to do a few tunings so we can get the energy balanced. Clear my divine third eye so that I can channel the messages that need to be heard. Clear my third chakra so that I can speak the words that are meant to be spoken. Clear my heart chakra so that divine love and divine will can come through only. I thank you that it's already done. Thank you for protecting this space. Amen and I say. Okay. So we're going to start with uh, this deck. I believe it's called Soul Journey. I don't remember uh, the type. I think it's Yasmin Bolin. So we're going to ask for... Um, I'm going to ask for cards for each one of the Neteru. We're starting with zero. So for the sphere zero, we have growth. It says, I want to expand my consciousness and my awareness. That is so timely. This has to do with the stellar gateway chakra. Being open to receive the messages from the divine, your ancestors, and your angels, your guardian angels that came with you in your first and your second birth. A third birth is the evolution of consciousness. It's not physical. That's that born again, born of a new mind that let this mind of Christ be also in you. That's what that is. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, Father, Mother, God. Thank you, ancestors. Thank you, divinity. We love you. They want these three, four. I gotta take them, because April, that's what this is all about. It's about the month of April. For the crown chakra, we have empathy. I am open to seeing both sides of a situation. <laughs> you guys are funny, I love you. <laughs> that's what I just said, being open. I am open to seeing both sides of a situation. I love Divine. I love them. They are funny. 
because they see us so clearly. We can't see them. But they're like right here. So funny. So this is our sphere zero, stellar gateway zero. Okay, I'm in. And so with us understanding that we need to expand our awareness of good and evil and of, all of our experiences individually and on the planet, then we become enlightened. That's what in Islam they call nur. Empathy, I'm open to seeing both sides of a situation. So when we understand the, I've been hearing, uh, not the law of karma, uh, cause and effect, cause and effect, cause and effect. Divine was speaking that to me last night over and over, cause and effect. We don't understand how what we do, think, feel, even intend affects everything. What we don't see has such power over what we'll become and what we will see and experience. So empathy, I am open to seeing both sides of the situation. I believe that this is about us understanding what the people that have affected us in a so-called negative way or hurt us, what they have gone through. And it'll show us just how deep the rabbit hole goes of how when, when evil is not checked, it becomes cancerous and spreads from one generation to another, like a cancer. This is why the divine wants us to heal because without us healing our inner self, we cannot affect the outer world in a positive way that will sustain. It won't sustain itself. We can project a false image of it being sustained. But until we deal with, uh, what is that white stuff? Until we deal with uh, the sickness inside. It's like, uh, for instance, acne, okay? I've been dealing with some acne situations. Sister Toffee's not always good. I, I've been being bad. I'm not going to tell you exactly what I've been doing. I've been eating things I shouldn't. <laughs> I know it's not funny. A lot of people do it when they're going through something. Emotional eating. I'm not a perfect person. Far from it. I'm going through this change just like you. When we learn to have empathy for the people, which I believe is a cultivated uh, skill, and we do this through what? Uh, expanding our consciousness. When we learn to have empathy uh, and see the both sides, both sides of a situation, uh, we start to understand. And I, what I hear right now is, in all that getting, get understanding. When you get understanding, you can truly free yourself. You're not just saying, I forgive. You are becoming forgiveness because you understand. And when you understand, you are able to overstand. You stand above the thing that took you under. I got spirit on me. Shout out to all the Rastafarians. They always say overstanding and understanding. As above, so below. As within, so without. So if you do not clean up the inside, you cannot clean up the outside. Our world needs to be cleaned up. And what we see and we're experiencing it's all a systemic effect of what's going on inside of our mind, body, spirits, and our hearts, and our desires, and our intentions. We have a, a sewer of filth inside of us. So many, so, mis so many misalignments with divine will. We are so far from love. We are so far from divine. We are far from love. We think we know. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. I feel my emotional side trying to come out. Divine wants to, to remind us of what love is. So at the stellar gateway chakra above the head, we have growth. So divine is saying they want us to grow consciously in our minds. We need empathy, and we do that by being open to see both sides of the situation. Now, this is going to take some emotional strength. Because when people hurt you, <laughs> it is very difficult to stay centered and breathing using that air element, that Aquarian, all-seer, all-seer energy to calm yourself down <laughs> and steady yourself, stable yourself so that you can receive the information because while a person is talking that is imbalanced or that has an entity attachment, you have to be able to use both the feminine and the logic. You have to be able to use what they call in the King James Version Bible discernment. You have to hear with feeling 
not with just hearing the words. People are very skilled wordsmiths, <laughs> and they know what to say, called the gift of gab. The gift of gab is good, but it does not constitute the truth. Truth has to be discerned and deciphered through spiritual awareness. Okay? So when you work on your spirit, and you work on tuning up your inner faculties of who you are, what you are, how you're made, and why you're here, you start to become more intuitive. Your clairs start to become more acclimated to being able to operate in the unseen. Your spiritual antennas become more effective. The frequency ability, the ability to pick up frequencies and pick up attunements around you becomes more heightened the more you develop your spirituality. Okay, so that was at the uh, crown chakra. This is above, so when we allow the divine, which I believe they're angels and spirit guides and ancestors to speak to us, they come through the crown chakra, then they go into the third eye, to Uji. Many of us have regret we're dealing with, the, the divine mind, we're dealing with thoughts of regret, Oh, why did this happen? That happened. That's not fair. I wish I would have never did this. I wish I would have never loved them. I wish I would have never trusted. I wish I would have never took a chance on that. We're dealing with regret. Many of us. I'm included. Sister Toffee's in this with you. Just because I'm a channeler doesn't mean I don't experience these things. I, I'm here because I've experienced the gamut of it. I mean, just, <laughs> it's a story, you know. Maybe one day my life will be a story. That can inspire others, maybe a movie. I don't mind. I realized that I had a dream that, the, that I wanted in this dimension. And the divine gave me absolutely opposite of what I wanted. So that me losing everything could be used to show people that when you lose everything, Number one, is for you to become aware of what's going on in the earth realm. Number two, it's to call you forward to deal with this injustice in life, to become an advocate for it, and to do something about it. We are God. We are the hands, the feet, the mouth, the words, and the heart of the divine, Christ, spirit of, spirit of life, the will. W-I-L-L, -L, so we can turn the W-H, double E-L, <laughs> okay? Things that happen in life are not always fair. Most times, oftentimes, are not fair, but they, it's definitely purposeful, full of purpose. Full of purpose. Yes, the process of becoming aware is very painful, emotionally. It's very painful. It does not feel good. It feels... Uh, humbling, it feels unfair, it feels uh, like being broken. Very, very, very uh, unfair, it feels that way. But as you awaken your consciousness, you begin to, to see that you are an ambassador for the divine, for a specific cause that is not being addressed. Because what is hidden cannot be healed. What you do not reveal cannot be healed. So there's too much hiding in the dark and in the shadows. And those of us that want to see a better world for our children, we have to do the work. God is us. We are God. I'm waiting on God. Well, God is in you. God's waiting on you to be the extension of God that you are. And so divine wisdom is needed. Okay? We are needed here so that we can create a world where we don't have to look outside every five minutes to wonder if our children are safe because we know the people around us have a better heart and consciousness that is aligned with the divine. Not because they're forced to, but because they want to, because they've felt this divine love that they've never felt before, that they are so adored and so taken care of and so provided for by the being that has ultimate power and can crush us but chooses to coddle us like their little baby, because we are. And once a person sees that is the truth, not psyching themselves out into belief, up into believing it, but knowing it and, 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 and receiving it, because it's true. It's true. We are loved, very loved by the divine. They love us so much. 
more than we can understand. You looking for a perfect parent, perfect father, perfect mother? Look up. Father God loves you, and he's perfect. He cannot make a mistake. Mother God loves you. The universe, she cannot make a mistake. Their love for you is unconditional. You are their precious child. But you have to become like them. You have to become a God. You cannot be a little baby forever. They will put some, you know, salve on your little boo-boos. But they need you to mature and get off the milk. And eat the manna of heaven and become the Tehuti, the teacher, not just the student. You are loved. You are adored. You are appreciated. You are needed. But you can't be used until you get your mind right. This is all of this one. This is the mind card. Now the application of the wisdom of the mind is used through Gemini Virgo energy, Mercury. Sebek. That's sphere eight, intelligence. This is sphere two, Tehuti, to measure divine wisdom, third eye. If you want to strengthen your third eye, your connection to the divine, so that you can have clarity of the divine wisdom that's being channeled to you, stop using fluoride toothpaste, stop eating white flour, white tortillas, white rice, all that. And if you really, really, really want it, stop eating meat altogether. And if you quadruple want it, don't eat it all and fast from sun up to sundown. Just about how you want it. We all have a choice. It's up to us how hard we want to chase God within ourselves. And then God, out, God will reveal itself outside of us. Okay? And uh, what, what can I say? Uh, one second. I wanna I wanna give an example here. One second. Okay. Be right back. Okay, so this is what the divine is telling me. A lot of people don't feel love. They've been hurt by parents that have never healed themselves. Let me just talk to you for a minute. They've been hurt by parents that have not healed themselves. That have been so busy with surviving, they've had no choice because the world is set up that way. They haven't had an opportunity to heal themselves. They haven't had the opportunity. And um, they basically ended up programmed to the point where uh, it's nearly impossible for them to deprogram themselves. And so someone um, in their bloodline, possibly a child, if you have more than one, will rise above their the consciousness of the parent and will be the quote unquote the Jesus of the family, okay? They will be the way shower. They will be the one that sacrifices themselves, meaning sacrifices their own will and will submit to the will of the divine. And through their life and through their submission to following the divine and taking each step that the divine guides them to do, the divine will be guiding them. I got spirit on me. The divine will be guiding them into how to break the epigenetic karmic DNA patterns. Some people will unite with their family again, some will not. But the work that's being done by those that are submitting to their calling, their spiritual calling, is going to clear up generations of karmic retribution that is set to be had by the divine because of the past ancestral uncleared karma basically which is not submitting to divine will 
following the ego, being full of pride, uh, not softening the heart, being unwilling to be vulnerable, those things, these prideful mentalities of what I say goes because I'm this, I hold this title. And the divine is not that way. The divine is loving, forgiving, and has unconditional love. And we have to learn to develop that. The divine is not haughty in letting us know that they have the power to allow nature to destroy us in a millisecond, just like that. But instead, they continue to provide provisions, provisions for our growth, even when we are spoiled brats. You know, it's like um, a father that has a son that's a teenager, you know, he's lifting weights and he has girls liking him and he's not understanding that his father is spending his every waking moment to take care of his, his child, his son. And the son is so caught up in himself because he's getting, you know, attention and whatnot at school, he forgets who he is and he forgets who his father is and he disrespects his father. Not a good idea. The only father I know is God, the father of heaven, but for those of, those of you that have been reprimanded by your father, well, maybe you deserved it. <laughs> you know? Why do you think James Brown made that song, Papa Don't Take No Mess? So those of you that have earthly fathers that have sacrificed themselves for you, uh, it would behoove you to humble yourself. <laughs> if you have a father that has been good to you, loving and supportive. I'm not talking about abusive fathers. I'm talking about a father that is connected with feminine energy. Many beautiful men have a connection to the divine feminine. They're very nurturing, even more nurturing than some women. May the divine bless you and expand you and give you the thanks and appreciation you deserve. Not enough fathers that are good to get that appreciation. So I'm telling you now, you are appreciated. The divine sees you and you will get your rewards. Okay, Baba? Okay. So let's continue. Woo, that was just spirit on me. Okay, so what I wanted to show you guys was... Uh, this is, the, this is like the divine. Here's the Father. Father God is the head. Okay? You want to know what the head is? I'm sorry. It's supposed to be backwards. It's almost, almost like pranayama when you hold in the light, right nostril, nostril, the left nostril is affected. When you hold in the left nostril, the right nostril is affected. Or left brain, okay? You hold in this nostril, the left brain, logic brain, masculine is affected. You get more air in, you hold in the, or, I'm sorry, you hold in the right nostril, the left brain's affected, logic. You hold in the left nostril, the right brain, creativity is affected, okay, with pranayama. You don't know what that is, look it up. It's a way to clear the, the mind. But this is, uh, even though it's uh, the tail, this is actually the head. This is the divine union. This is like the flip side. The Father, Father God is saying, I and the universal mother are one. This is my wife. Okay, we're back to back because we're not turning our back on each other because if we go around, we'll come together. Okay, 12 hours in the day, 12 hours at night. Nekhebet, okay? Father, Mother, God watching all day long, day and night. Okay, so this is Father God, the head, okay? Which is the seed. The head is the beginning of things, right? It starts with a thought. And this, I'm pretty sure that was there, right? Was that there? I'm going to have to look and see if that was here. Was it here? I think it was here. And this energy is the tail. I'm sorry, it's upside down, but Nekhebet, the divine feminine, okay? The creative force, okay? This is the, the soil that takes in the sun energy, okay? And shapes, pulls out the nutrients out of the mind and shapes it into something that is tangible, right? So the father... Oh, that's the tail. I'm sorry. Father energy is potential. This is the masculine energy. Potential. What brings that potential out is the feminine energy. The divine mother. Okay? There's a picture. Picture worth a thousand words. On this coin, this is a... Uh, let's see what kind of synchronicity we have. Synchronistic energy we have going here. Is that a tree? No, it's not a tree. Uh, but there's something here. Let's see what this is a coin that I got recently. Let's see what kind of synchronous 
this is what we have going on here. I'm interested. I took a fingerprinting course, so I have a, a device here that will help me look really closely. Let's see what we have. Yeah, we, are, we truly are uniquely designed. None of us have the same fingerprint. Okay, let's see. Oh, that's a man. Okay, let me tell you what's on the coin. There is a man, there is a house. This is absolutely beautiful. It says National Park for Art. This is a gorgeous pin. I don't think I'm gonna throw this away. There's a house on a hill with two trees at the top. And there's a man, there's a sign and there's a man writing on this. It looks like, no, it's actually a man with an easel. It's painting. He has an easel and he has a, a set of paints in his left hand and an easel in his right. That is so indicative of what we're talking about. This man's mind is the masculine energy, the seed, the thought, and the canvas and the paint brush and the paint, the tools, and his body itself, being able to use his body to bring into physical sight what he's seeing in his mind. He's deciding to paint this image with two trees, ironically, sitting on top of a hill by a house. And what is a house? A place of protection, a shelter. The two trees represent to me divine feminine and divine masculine being whole within themselves. And the home sits in the middle of this picture. It says W E I R farm, wire farm. So I don't know, look that up you guys if you're interested. I think everything happens for a reason. So let's look up wire farm. Look it up when you get a chance. Leave me a message in the comments if you want to tell me about it. Very interesting. Hmm. Okay, so anyway, that little short story is about what I believe was a synchronicity. Divine is telling us that they want men and women to be whole within themselves. The reason why love is not working, relationships are not working, is because people are not whole. Because they don't know who they are, what they are, how they're made, why they're here, what they're supposed to be doing. Okay? They've relied on external forces, uh, sources and forces for so long to define them that basically we've been living lives that we have not owned and that are not our own and that we have not owned, okay? We have been living lives, lives that are not our own, okay? That we have not honed. You cannot hone anything if you give it to the, you give the power to someone else, right? How can you control something when you give someone else the steering wheel? And so that's what's been happening with us in this world. We have been giving our power away without knowing it. But divine is doing a overhaul of conscious operations in all of the people because they made us. Father, Mother, God created us and nobody can stop this evolution, okay? I don't know if you guys heard about that uh, evolution being te not being televised. It's, it's not because it's going to be on the television of your mind. Because that's, not a, that's not a tell lie vision. That's a tell truth vision. So tell truth vision in your mind, okay? That's what's going on. Divine said that all wisdom will be done away with, all religion will be done away with, and I will write my law on the tablet of their hearts and minds. So we will be operating in the conscious connection of our divinity in the future, when we are probably not gonna, those of us that are here, we probably won't be here. It'll probably be our children, I mean our children and our grandchildren and our grandchildren's children, that will be living this new world. I truly believe we are evolving as a as a human uh, network because it's 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 uh, it's constituted and it's required for our survival. Okay, so we've done the crown chakra. Wow, we're already at an hour. That's something. We've done the. Uh, I'm sorry. We've done the stellar gateway, which is above the crown. We've done the crown chakra. And third eye, we were at regret. I know I cannot change the past. So as I said before, divine is telling us the reason why we've gone through the things that we have been doing because we've been called to a higher purpose and that is to clear up 
misconstrued conceptions about what is acceptable to the divine. What is the will of God? I'm hearing that scripture, what is the height, the breadth, the width of the love of God for us? That's what I'm hearing. The true love of God is literally God living within us. That's what I believe God is. God is living inside of us and God wants to actually operate in us like a true divine union. Like literally talking, walking with God inside of us every day with no shame, with our good, our indifferent, our so-called bad, all of it. And just becoming transparent with God, not, not even hiding and running or feeling shame. Just being completely transparent with God. That's what the divine wants. The divine doesn't want other people having control over our minds, over our will, and our choices. That has to stop because many people's lives have been destroyed by others. A lot of times people in your own family. And it's because they have not known the true divine template of their original consciousness. It's not that... Now, I'm not here to bash anyone. The human experience is about a, becoming aware of what is wrong in this world. We can either let whatever powers that have influenced us continue, or we can decide, no, I have a choice. There is an option. There is a duality here. I have an option. I'm going to exercise the use of my option. I'm going to choose to use my own divine inner guidance. Period. Period going to follow the laws from which I uh, reside, but I am going to follow the inner guidance within me. As far as me determining who I am, what I am, how I'm made, where I'm headed, and what I'm supposed to be doing, ultimately. Now the balance has to come in where we understand that what we've gone through is for us to address an issue on a global level. Okay, because what you've gone through, look at that light coming through. Come on, spirit. Look at it coming straight. <laughs> See that light? Oh, my God. Light's coming right through. Wow. Do you see that? you see that? It's almost like a violet light. Look at that. Wow. I love you. I love you, brother of God. They want us to get rid of this regret. Yes, it hurts. And I don't believe the regret's going to go away uh, instantly. It's going to be a layer-by-layer layer release. Okay? And it's going, to be, it's going to come through light. Light is knowledge. You see the light coming through on this card? See the point to the center. See, the divine is trying to change our core. Core is what you stand on. It's your center. It's where you pivot from. Okay, if the if the core is weak, your your navigation is going to be out of alignment. Okay, your ship can end up anywhere. Okay. The next one we have is Head uh, Heru. So we just did the uh, third eye. Okay, divine wants us to get rid of regret. Okay, they want us to have empathy for ourselves and others. They want us to have conscious expansion through growth. Okay. Awareness of things that are hidden. See, the thing is, divine is using myself and other light workers, tarot readers, astrologers. I consider like the new high priests of the new world. I find uh, regular ministers great. They inspire you. They give you examples of what it means to go through your jihad or your transformation or your resurrection of consciousness. Okay. But as far as the details of your specific life, I believe tarot readers and astrologers are the new wave priests, the new priests that show us how to become the embodiment of our own individual template and how to find our path. I don't think they're going to be going away because I don't think tarot readers and astrologers are uh, religions, uh, are religions okay they are people using their gifts they are not religions so i believe uh, however long the internet will exist i believe tarot readers and astrologers will not 
be needed less, they will be needed more. Uh, and so in the, uh, in the spiritual world, I say it's one of the most powerful occupations you can have. Okay. And the, uh, the qualifications, um, are from the mystery schools of, uh, the inner worlds, not a, an Ivy league school on the earthly plane. And I am not telling you by any means, do not get your education on the earthly level. Okay. That will help you to use the knowledge you have spiritually to apply it in this world and to gain resources that will help you to become more powerful and to help more people. So please understand, I'm not saying don't get your uh, earthly education, okay? I'm saying get a balance because you have two aspects of yourself. You have an earthly self and you have a spiritual self. Both worlds and both beings, both parts of your being need to be fed. And if you do, if you feed one less than the other, well, you're going to topple over. Okay, so uh, stellar gateway, zero, crown chakra, I meant um, stellar gateway growth. Divine wants growth for us. Crown chakra empathy. We need to learn the bigger story. Okay, I am open to seeing both sides of the situation. Okay. Stellar Gateway says growth. I want to expand my consciousness and my awareness. That's above the crown. That's what the divine is saying to us. Okay, the empathy, the crown chakra, they want us to be open to. I am open to seeing both sides of the situation. We have to know how evil or how wrong action or wrongdoing is created within the mind and the heart it's normally through experiences and how does that happen they experience injustices through people had that have not healed that term hurt people hurt people well some hurt people don't want to heal and so this is where the problem comes because they don't realize they're being used by a a a, a low level low frequency low vibrating and a low thought entity that does not think of the highest good but thinks about their own selfish good and the good is only serves the demon inside it does not serve even the person later on because the person that actually does the harm suffers later through karmic retribution okay what you get what you put out you will get back in divine timing okay there's no way around that okay so at the throat chakra we have speaking about love, heheru, the imagination. We have to talk about vain imaginations, bringing every thought into captivity that works against the knowledge of God. What is the knowledge of God? We're going back to the third eye, Tehuti, how to properly measure, not just for the short-term satisfaction. What are the long-term effects of what you're doing to your children, to your mate? to your culture, to the world. We are responsible for the disparities we see in the world. It's our fault. Let me tell you something about the devils. One thing I will give the devils is a positive. The devil is here as a bounty hunter for God because uh, the devil is the rod for the fool's back, okay? This is the devil. Well, the devil's not the, this. Yeah, so I'll find something else. <laughs> Let's just say I have all positive tools here, but I'm just saying I'm trying to find something that... I can use. Okay, just say this is the devil. The devil is a rod. The devil is here to beat us into awakening. Every time we do something wrong, pain, spiritual awakening, something happens. I mean, like I said, it doesn't mean it's fair, but it, it's purposeful. Whatever it is that has hurt you in your life is, has happened so you can wake up to an injustice in the world. And what's way down deep in your cosmic DNA is the power and the ability to become Heru, Christ. You have the power to resurrect the proper balance, the proper wisdom, the proper knowledge of what the divine will is. And if you can transmute, uh, transmute that pain of your life and your experiences, you will become an ascended master. And the ascended masters that are helping you now will welcome you home when you leave. And I'm sure there's many more abundant blessings on the other side. And I even believe that for some of us, there will be blessings on this side. But it all depends on the entire balancing of all the netters, the physical body, what we give birth to, what we, what we uh, take in as uh, 
our focus, intellect, what we sit around and imagine and desire, what we decide is going to be our truth, our will. All these choices make a difference. They all are moving together, like parts to an engine. If one part's broken, well, you better call a mechanic. But if we can become aligned with the divine will, this is perfect alignment with the divine will, not this card, because it has three. But this is this was what came out yesterday to show that we're not in alignment with divine will collectively. Okay, as far as the number and the ratio is concerned, as far as all human beings that are living on the planet, we're not in alignment with the divine will. Not enough of us. And so what they need to uh, instill in us is a new perspective of love. We need to talk about the imagination, because this is what it is. Vain imaginations have destroyed our lives. People that have been hurt don't want to forgive. They don't believe they can. They don't think it's smart to do it. They don't think being vulnerable is good. They don't think sharing what has happened to them is good. They just pr prefer to project, I'm, I'm this, I'm that. I'm going to protect myself. I'm going to show how tough I am because nobody's going to hurt me again. And they're afraid to show their vulnerability. And what I believe that, I mean, what I believe is the divine is saying, sure, show your tough side, show your resilience, but also show your vulnerability. There's nothing that's outside of our mind or our ability. We can stop anyone or anything at any time from harming you. We have to show our humanity, our weaknesses and our strengths. The human experience is both. And when we address these things and what we've gone through, with whom, how it happened, why we, well, this is what we're supposed to examine. What do we go through? Who do we go through it with? Why do we think we went through? through it, who was involved? What do you think you can do about it? Okay. First you find out the who, what, when, where, why, how of yourself. Then you find out the variables. Who are the people involved? What was the environment involved? And you study that. And you, as you begin to study, whatever way you do, you're either going to write, you're going to vocalize it and record it, but you need to be able to have a, something you can go back on to remember what's come out of you. Uh, this examination of your life experience is going to bring awareness and conscious expansion, which is going to cause you spiritual and mental growth. Okay? I want to expand my consciousness, okay, and my awareness of learning about the dark and the light, okay, positive and the negative. God wants you to choose to be God on your own, but you have to do it with wisdom. There's a there's a rod for the fool's back. See, we've been foolish. I mean, at least I, Sister toffee has been foolish. See, the first way, the first sign that you're foolish is when you are prideful. Pride is the first sign that you are a fool. <laughs> How do I know? Because I've been a fool for a long time. Pride is the number one. That's how you know you're gonna fall. Pride comes before a fall. Humility, humility is such a wonderful attribute to have. It takes maturity and discipline to value it, number one, and then to apply it later. Because you know it's going to benefit you later, humbling yourself before the hand and the mind and the will of the divine. You know you will get more protection by humbling yourself, by basically asking the divine, what is it that you want me to do? How do you want me to think? And if you find that way to think, you just have to ask, okay, so how do I do this? Because I don't know. I don't have it. I'm hurting. How do I get rid of the hurt so that I can alchemize? Show me step by step because I can't do this on my own. Just be honest. They'll help you step by step. And so at our stellar gateway, Divine is asking us to grow and expand our consciousness at the crown chakra, they're saying, be open to your spirit guides, ancestors, and angels that are coming in to try to help you be open enough to see both sides of the situation. What happened to the people that hurt you? What made them the way that they are? Once you understand their story, now you can understand and show more compassion because you have more insight into how they became the way that they are and why they are hurting 
so much to the point where they hurt you and they either are unaware or they are aware but they just can't control this pain and they need help and they need love uh, however although they need the love one thing I will encourage you to do those of you that have a very strong divine feminine nature male or female embodiment physically by no means do you sacrifice yourself for them if they do not want to change if they do not want to change you're going to have to leave them out of your circle because if you add them to your circle then you're going to allow the karma that they deserve to come upon you Harakuti You can become guilty by association and you can reap the karma of another person by being around the wrong people that are not in alignment with divine will and that are not in alignment for a blessing because they didn't do the inner work. You need to be around people that have done the inner work. This does not mean put them down. This means pray for them, but release them with love. Wish them well, wish them evolution, wish them divine guidance and inner strength to alchemize what they have been through, to find the divine purpose in it all, and to embody that purpose and then to serve the divine in that purpose, to help another person that may have been going through something similar or worse than what they have. That's what we're all here to do. We all think, oh, we're part of families. I'm not saying it's not good to be a part of a family, but we're ultimately a part of the divine family of God, and we are here on an assignment by the divine to fix the things that are going on underneath the veil in this world that are causing trauma in people's lives. Nobody's gonna do it for us, we have to do it, okay? I'm getting hot, this candle's bothering me. So, I wanna let you know you're called to do something. Whatever pain you have, it is your purpose. You are meant to find a way to understand it, to be able to explain it, and uh, learn how to master it, and after you master it, you are meant to teach others. That's the simplest way I can uh, explain it. Uh, if we do not heal our inner selves, we will not transform our world. We are affecting the universe and we are affecting nature. It's not the other way around. They don't affect us, we affect them. They are looking at us because they know we are the gods, okay? The netters, they know, we're the, they know we're the gods of this earth, okay? They are the governors, okay, of our God powers. They are the first children of Father, Mother, God. They're watching us and waiting for us to call to help, for help. If we don't hone in and own our, and embody our powers, we will be taken advantage of by the malevolence. Malevolence are Stephen's, Stephen and his beings. I forgot the girl that made a joke on YouTube about <laughs> the devil being Stephen and his, friend, his, his little friends or beings. Stephen and his beings, I thought it was better. I get tired of saying the word devil. But anyway, yeah, Stephen and his beings. And anybody named Stephen, I'm sorry, this is not you're not a devil, Stephen, okay, if there's any Stevens out there listening. Um, we're being recalibrated back to love, family. We have forgotten about love. We've forgotten what love is. And we're being retaught how to love because everything is standing on love. Without love, we are, we're headed for chaos and, and destruction. We are a representation of the universe. Universe projects back to us what we project to it because we are an extension of creator. We are God as a collective. And with our intentions, our desires, our hearts, our imaginations, our will, our actions, we are sending out messages as a collective, okay? And it's balanced by what? Tehuti. It's an energetic signature. They're saying, oh, well, they want chaos. Oh, well, they want harmony. Oh, they want lies. They want deceit. They want... I have other words that I don't talk about that I don't use here on this channel. Such a tough, he's human. Oh, yeah. Far from perfect. Far from it. Far from it. They're trying to get us to measure properly. Listen, you build anything without the foundation of love, you can forget it standing. It's not going to stand. Everything was built with love intended, love in mind. And without that, nothing can survive. Divine is trying to heal itself. God has chaos, and that's in the feminine part. 
That's in the mother energy. That's when that that's that's that waving energy that it's moving all the time. It's always moving. It just has to do something. And so the father God comes in and grabs it. Masculine energy. Okay? It says, we're gonna do this. And it starts to guide it, okay? This is the mind, and this is the creative force, and it controls it. Okay? This is that working of father, mother, God energy. This is how men and women are meant to work together, complementarily. Okay? All of this against each other, this is so opposed to nature. It's not supposed to be happening. But it's because we don't know what love is. We think we don't know what love is. <laughs> the seed of all life does not abuse the governors. These are the, these are the children. Fire, first fire, water, air, and earth are the first children. Then these are the second children. And all the other angelic beings that we can't even name. Okay? Which are powers that govern and control basically the world we cannot see. Okay? They were here first. We were here last, but we were not the least. Okay? Divine decided to give an itself, its own essence, to its most, to its last creation, which is its highest, and it's us, human beings. But without this divine wisdom of the understanding of what we are and who is working with us, the net their rule, and how we are to use these powers of the divine God within ourselves, Father, Mother, God's powers so that they can help us to manifest the life we want. We're just going to be used. We're going to be used. We're going to be used not to satisfy our own lives, but to satisfy Stephen and his beings. So you, got to make a you have to make a decision today. Do you want to be used by your higher self, Father, Mother, God, or do you want Stephen's beings to use you and to contribute to the uh, collective destruction of humanity causing generations of uh, hidden filth and uh, muck and gook and destruction in the inner self where you find people that lie to themselves and uh, project the ideal that they're healthy when they're out there really sneaking behind the shadows doing drugs or what have you because they're in pain and they're afraid to be vulnerable and they're afraid to tell someone because they're hurting and they don't want to appear weak when they really need comfort and love they should not be judged. They should be protected, loved, and cared for with the divine feminine energy. Okay? Had Heru with a loving imagination. Okay? With positive, creative, feminine force. Not in the negative, not, not the wicked city woman, but the divine mother energy. Bringing out the best in the person. Not to control them. Not to use their children as a stepping stone or a servant, but to embody them to become whatever it is the divine called them to be. Fathers and mothers that are in the earth body are blessed to have a child as a gift for a short amount of time. They come through men and are formed in women and birthed out of women, but people come from God. Let's get that straight. So many of you mothers and fathers out there that have this haughty attitude of you being a sovereign being over your children, you are so out of alignment with divine will. Woo, I got spirit on me. Hold on. Woo. Woo, give me a minute. Oh, I felt that. Sorry. Woo, I feel like a church woman in the South. <laughs> Oh, I feel it again. They said, right on, baby girl. Mm. Woo! Okay. That's enough, you guys. Thank you. Creative, divine, feminine love that uplifts, builds up, supports, and affirms and strengthens, not destroys. Divine has been putting a lot of things in my mind lately about toxic feminine energies. Toxic feminine energies have become toxic masculine energies because they were hurt by an unhealed masculine energy that hurt them. And so they become a worse conduit of destruction than the man that hurt them. Ladies, I'm not putting you down. I'm a woman. I've been through it too. But you have to allow divine wisdom to come through your third eye. 
to transmit the energy so that you can stop feeling this. What? Regret. So that you can develop more empathy and align more with your true feminine nature so that you can grow consciously and become more of aware of men and their experience. We are not in the male embodiment in this form, those of us that are females in this incarnation. We are in the feminine. But we need to understand men better. They need understanding. Okay? Uh, a lot of men use sex as a drug to heal their pain because they're dealing with things that we have no idea as females. In this embodiment, I'm a female. In my past life, I don't know for any of you that have watched my videos, I was a white male. And I remember I was living in the 1700s. I was very tall and I was poor. But I was a tough dude. But those of us that are in female embodiment right now, we are meant to heal the masculines. And we're meant to relearn what it is to be the divine feminine. And, it, you know, there's nothing wrong with being a, a sexy mama, but do it behind closed doors. Because piety is needed for men to feel valued. They come out of women, and so they have mothers that have been uh, programmed to become something that they are not meant to be that is not healthy as a mother, then it affects the, ma the child or it affects the husband. I mean, you know, a harlot can only satisfy a man for so long. What a man needs is soul affirmation and strengthening. He needs to not be, uh, not to have his ego stroked, but to have his inner being fortified and nurtured and strengthened. Confidence. Affirmation. Okay, but also realization of him knowing that you are his strength. You are the soil that brings forth his potential. And so a man of divine wisdom is a very powerful and a very beautiful man. Very beautiful. A pious man with wisdom is so attractive. To a divine feminine, of course. So women, we have to learn and expand our consciousness and have to understand why men have hurt us in the way they have. It's a deeper story than the surface information we've seen or experienced, very deep. Most men will never talk about their pain. And so God gives women the opportunity through mothers. Sometimes mothers are the cause of men's pain. Through wives. Maybe men have been married once, twice, three times. Even through daughters. Daughters can be very transformative in their father's lives. A lot of men that have a great relationship with their daughters, they say it's a love they've never known. And I mean, their daughter, daughter's their buddy, you know. I think that's some, one of the most beautiful relationships. I love to see men that are older, that have adult daughters, that just, they're like peas and carrots. It's the cutest thing. I love it. It just really makes me smile. I, I've never had that in the earthly sense, but I have it with Father God in spirit form. But I love to see it. It's so beautiful. Uh, so divine is trying to get us back to love. We forgot what love is. We, 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 we've been thinking that all of this external activity is what we need. And it's really a program that is uh, a glitch in our spiritual computers. It's not what the divine wants for us. They never did. Stephen's beings whispering in our ears. We fell for it. All you need is food, shelter, clothing, and water. And clarity and love and the truth. And so there's a resurrection of the things that are not tangible, that are of value in our life. And it all starts with being aware of what we need. And what do we need? We need love. We need love, beauty. The beauty of life to help us want to live. To not get up drudgingly like, oh, I got to go to work. Oh, oh, another day. No, we're supposed to be living a beautiful life smelling flowers. Lit up with that sun god raw energy.
proud to be connected to the divine feminine Hathor, divine universal mother energy, even if you're in masculine form. There's nothing more beautiful than a strapping masculine man that's a connect connection with his divine feminine energy. A nurturing man is so beautiful. Any of us uh, channeled messages, many of us will sacrifice our lives as we knew it for a greater good. It will be painful. But on the eternal level, we will be changing the template of uh, our family blood lineage and what what karmic uh, manifestations will come through for the next generations. And so uh, we need to take up this mantle with pride and strength, determination, and uh, conscious awareness. Take this walk of victory. Okay, so we'll get rid of the regret once we allow the divine to grow us through understanding both sides of the story. Start to understand the darkness. See, darkness is there for you to study, okay? I said life is not always fair, but it's purposeful, full of purpose, okay? Full of purpose. Let me turn this card back the way it was. Both of these were actually upside down. Okay, so the imagination card was for our throat chakra. We need to talk about love. Well, let's talk about it, talk about it. I don't know why I'm hearing that. Gotta move on. I'm hearing that. And I'm hearing uh, that song, Some Say Love. My mother loves that song. Some say love, excuse me. It is a river that flows, okay? Mm -mm. She loves that song. Anyway, I don't know who that's by. If you know who that is, leave in the description, okay? Box. So, acceptance, I'm learning to accept the things that I cannot change. We cannot change certain people. We cannot change their love language. We cannot change their desires. We can change, however, ourselves and how we respond to our disappointments with others and how they either don't want to love or are incapable of loving or they don't want to give that kind of love. We can accept it. And this is all at the uh, throat chakra. And this says we need to communicate if it's possible. If you can't communicate with the person, we're still clearing up relationship issues. If people, for some reason, do not want to discuss it, some people are in such pain or they're dealing with narcissistic mentalities, they don't want to talk about it. If they don't want to talk about it, you find a way to get that out of you. Find a way to get it out. Do not sit and let the cesspool of toxic emotions just spiral up in you and bubble up like, like impurities in a pot of water. Talk about it with somebody. Write about it. Get creative. That's what I did. This is just me taking my pain and sharing it with the world in a way that uh, I'm being guided to do so. I am learning to accept the things that I cannot change. This is all about accepting people for who they are. What is that saying Oprah Winfrey said, uh, her mentor Maya Angelou said? When people tell you who they are, believe them. I have some people that I love very dearly, that I've had around me most of my life, and I tried several times to talk to them. Many times. about the condition of our relationship. I was met with uh, rejection. I was met with uh, blocking. I was met with uh, lack of empathy. It was almost as if they were silently saying, we're going to play this game of delusion because I need this 
for us to stay connected because this is my identity. And if you take that away from me, you're going to expose me. And I'm not going to have that because I was hurt. And you wanting this transparent, truthful relationship, well, you know, that crosses my boundaries. And I love you, but you know, you're not going to get into me see. You're not going to get intimate with me, intimacy, into me see. You're not going to see that deep in me. I don't care who you are. We can have the same blood. I don't care. I got secrets and I got things you won't know about me. You never will. But I can still say you're my family, though. I got a lot of things that I have said and done about you that I will never tell you. You can find out or not. But uh, you need to keep this narrative up if you want to be in my life. Now, I don't care if it hurts you. No, we're never going to talk about it. Forget it. That's what I got. I'm, I'm, I'm just speaking from my heart what I felt. They didn't say that. But that's what happened. You know what happened to me? I don't have... Yeah, I have something here. This is what happened. Ah. <laughs> it won't break. <laughs> broken heart, broken heart, broken heart, broken heart. That's what happened. Broken heart. Then I had to grab onto my selenite for dear life. Clean it out. Clean it out. Then I had to tap into some. I had to do it all. Then I had to get a little bit more. I'm just being silly for a moment. Meditation balls. Whatever I can get my hands on to transcend my thoughts, my emotions. You got me a tuning fork. One of my most recent tools. I don't know if you can hear that, but I hope you can. Energy clear, clears energy. I know you might think I'm weird, but I do put it on my third eye so I can get clear messages. Also put it right by my earlobes. You can really hear it really well. And heart chakra and throat chakra. This is how I clear my energy so I can make sure that the messages that are coming through are being channeled by the divine. So let's get back to business. I know we're past an hour. I say one hour, 30 minutes. I've never done this long of a video, but I don't know. This is what spirit's doing. So we have to accept people for who they are, accept those that are not willing to expand, and accept that they are where they are. doesn't mean they never will. It just means that you and they are in two different places as far as on the love frequency, okay? And you have to gravitate or allow those that are on your vibration to be attracted to you so that you can feel secure and comfortable, okay? It doesn't have to be those that have your blood. It's just those that have your your heart space, okay? And this is where the family, the collective family of God comes in. So this has to do with your throat chakra, speaking your truth to yourself, if not to the person. If they're not open, fine. Talk to the divine about it. Talk to a friend about it. Talk to a counselor about it. Record yourself on a, on a recorder and, and keep it yourself and listen to yourself. Basically, what you're, say, what you're saying is you're going to heal your relationships through the throat chakra, Capricorn energy, Saturn. The word is sharper than, two, a, any, than a double-edged sword and goes down to the marrow of the bone. There is a need to speak it. It doesn't mean anybody has to hear it, but there is something about the spoken word. In the beginning was the word, the word was God, and the word was with God. And the word came down and dwelt among men and became flesh. When we speak, we are using the throat chakra, okay, the power of Saturn. The taskmaster, it's not just about creating with our hands, it's about creating with the spiritual hands. The spiritual hands is the throat. I remember dating a guy a long time ago that told me that the words are hands in the spirit world. <laughs> we bring things from the unseen into the physical world through what we say. So let's go to the heart chakra. We got Nekhebet in reverse, which is negative creation of the heart, okay? The heart is out of balance. It is not in alignment with the divine feminine nature of love. 
We're not giving birth to divine feminine energy in the right way. This is a toxic feminine energy, okay? This also is speaking to me about women not healing from past trauma, from relationships, from heartbreaks, from divorce, from being a single mother, or uh, men having bad relationships with females, being misogynistic because of a bad relationship with a female. Now they have toxic perspectives of women. Men, they want you to heal too. Okay? This is our, then our ability to love, to nurture ourselves and others. They want us to learn how to love and nurture again. Men, this, this is referring to you as well. It's not just women. This is you tapping into the nurturing energy. You need to cry, get it out. You need to ask why, get it out. I've made a lot of mistakes in my life regarding people I was responsible for. I projected my pain, my anger. Basically, the, the energy that was transferred into me from Stephen's beings, I transferred. And that's what's happening with demonic activity. All they do is transfer the destruction from one person to another person and another person. I'm speaking of generational curses. So those of you that don't think it's a problem or think it's an issue when you are verbally abusive, mothers, fathers, and you use your throat chakra for bringing down another person, you're causing more problems than you think. You're affecting a person's mindset. You're affecting their self-worth. You're affecting their ability to love and believe in themselves. You're affecting their ability to identify with who they are, what they are, how they're made, what they're supposed to be doing, the who, what, where, why, when of themselves. If anything, women, you need to learn because we are the ones who are supposed to be teaching our children about the who, what, when, where, why, how of ourselves. Fathers, if you are a mother energy and you are raising your children because the mother of your child is unfit, this replies to you. Speaking of the mother energy, any of you that have to nurture and care for children, you are responsible for teaching this child who they are, why they're here, where they're headed, what they're supposed to be doing. You. So you need to learn about yourself as a spirit because if you don't know it, you don't have it. And if you don't have it, you can't give it. Without spiritual knowledge, your child would be susceptible to external forces, being able to manipulate them into believing that something that is being offered to them is valuable for their life purpose, and it may not be. It's very important to cultivate in your children how to connect to their inner divine spirit and how to follow the inner divine guidance. Mothers and fathers, you need to develop this in your children. You need to teach them meditation. Something else the divine share with me last night. Many mothers and fathers have sacrificed their children to demonic entities without even knowing it. Without even knowing it. They wonder why they have generational trauma with their children, with their extended family. It's because nobody is, the adults aren't healing. They're not healing from their trauma. They're not healing. They are refusing to uh, acknowledge certain things. They're refusing to be vulnerable. They're refusing to talk to the divine about pain inside of them that they know is there. It's been there for a long time. But they refuse to acknowledge it. And there's a toxicity within them that they cannot see with the physical eye. And that energy is not going anywhere. You cannot remove energy. It only transmutes and it hides too. It will come out in one way or another. And it's going to affect your children. It's going to affect your children's children. One thing, another thing the divine is telling me is that when you hurt your children and you say it's okay to hurt your children, whatever seed that's planted that will show itself when the child becomes an adult will be transferred to the next generation. So not only do you hurt your children, you hurt your grandchildren. Yeah, you do. I'm telling you, I got spirit on me. 
Oh, I got spirit on me. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not telling you to hurt your feelings. It's time to grow up. Let's grow up, okay? I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I'm telling you what not healing yourself is doing. The scripture that's coming to me right now is a foolish, a wise woman builds her house with her words. A foolish woman tears it down with her words. Contention, fussing, ne complaining, being negative. I know black women got it bad. I'm a black woman, I know. It's because of pain. I'm not, I'm not saying I don't acknowledge your pain, I do. But we've got to find a way to level up above it. In ancient Egyptian science, it's called bearing your ba. Bearing your ba. Your ba is your purpose. Not allowing the emotions to control you to the point where you continue to blurt out and spew out negative words, but where you take the energy and alchemize it. Behind the eyelids, and start working with Tehuti, your third eye to measure. Moving it on into Ma'at, the heart space. Working it all out from the heart chakra all the way up. What can I do about healing myself? What can I do to speak truth that will heal myself and others? So that people in the world can stop getting hurt. Because we're all affecting the ethereal vibration we're living in. How do I alchemize it in my mind and understand both sides of the situation? So that I can teach. So that I can create in the positive feminine energy. Nurturing and loving as opposed to, I'm going to show you who I am. I'm a powerful queen. You got some women like that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Women that speak like that they have not finished their alchemy. And they talk like that because they haven't had anyone stand by them to affirm that they are, in fact, a goddess. They've had people trying to tear them down, so they've had no choice but to fight for their soul sovereignty, for their value, for their identity. There's an underlying current of women being undervalued. It's just a societal thing. I don't know if it's global. I definitely know it's going on in the United States. It's been my experience, my entire experience. My life has been a complete story of how people I have loved have, little by little, just picked me apart. Like, like a flower pet, like flower petals coming off a flower, just one by another. And what that's been is uh, insecurity. True divine masculines do not take. That's like you having a garden and you're going to pull out all the good nutrients and you put seeds in there and say, okay, now grow seeds. What sense does that make? No, a good farmer is going to create a really rich compost, right? It's going to use everything. It's not going to throw anything out that can be used to create a good nourishing soil for new seeds to be planted in so that it can grow, make a good harvest. Divine masculines, God men, earth gods, Okay. They take everything that they see, even the so-called negative. Oh, well, she's been through that or she's been through this. They take the wisdom of what this woman may have gone through or male or anything. They use it to create an instruction template or booklet that will help to teach them how to become more useful, valuable. They don't use it against, they use it for how to heal, how to fix. That's what divine masculines do. Now, toxic masculines, well, they're weak and they're not healed either, so they're going to look to hurt you. They are not divine masculines. They're toxic masculines. They are a, a, a stem of Stephen's beings. Some masculines, some feminines will choose the darkness. I'm here to bring light. We want to turn this up right. Positive feminine energy, nurturing and loving, positive. How can I make things better? Not mulling over the past and complaining. Okay? Heart chakra, right? 
Is that the heart chakra? Make sure I got myself right. Stellar gateway is growth. This is us allowing growth to come in from the divine. Empathy is the crown chakra. Third eye chakra is getting rid of regret. Throat chakra is speaking the truth about love, how we can love ourselves, the people that do not acknowledge us, will not be accountable, do not want to talk about it, will not do it. We give our own selves to liberation and we free ourselves through speech, whether we do a recording for ourselves or whether we talk to a counselor or we talk to God, or whatever. A tarot reader, astrologer, or whoever you want to talk to. Get that stuff out of you. Heart chakra, okay? So now we're talking about the solar plexus. This is solar plexus, right? The will is to create with positive divine feminine love, nurturing, not toxic femininity, not complaining, not being a tyrant, a verbal tyrant. A lot of what it says, um, a, a contentious woman is like a continuous dropping, dripping. I know that men that uh, men hate a complaining woman. You want to make a man hate you? Complain all the time. He'll run away. So this is dealing with toxic feminine energy. Some men have it. Uh, some of my males, males out there, they're in same-sex relationships. You know, there's been this underlying current of uh, feminine energy, which you are dominant in. That's why you date men. You're with a man. You have become uh, a, an, an extension of the toxic feminine energy. That's not something to follow. Uh, the feminine energy is nurturing and loving, not, uh, you know, not a... Uh, Not an Erica Kane. I don't know how old you guys are. Erica Kane was a, a an actress uh, or a storyline actress of uh, I think it was Days of Our Lives. I don't know what it was. Anyway, it was a um, series in the daytime. She come on and she was like, a, she was um, beautiful, powerful, influential. Men just dropped to her feet. You know, I don't think that. That's a bad thing. I think that um, that over-the-top thing needs to stop. It's all about being loving and nurturing, right? So this is for anybody in, in the feminine energy. And uh, just we need to understand what feminine energy is. Um, I'm not going to judge anybody. I know those of you that are heterosexual probably think, why is she talking to men that are gay? There's men that are gay in the world, and, and Divine is saying, talk to everybody. Okay, I'm not the judge. All I know is we all have souls, and I have to address everybody, okay? People say, know who your audience is. I don't know my audience. I haven't met them. So far, people are too scared to even talk to me. I don't know why. I mean, I have a few names that I could see in, uh, you know, YouTube. Um, and I'll mention them. I've said I've said I was going to do it before, but you know, I got to do that. I know Evez is one. Shout out to Evez if he ever watched this. <laughs> um, we're supposed to be loving. That's what the negative creative energy is creating chaos and drama and conflict. Being a contentious feminine energy. We need to stop that. Whoever you are, whatever embodiment you have. That's a no-no. That's at the solar plexus. Divine is saying, stop being toxic fe feminine. Stop being a toxic feminine and be a divine feminine. Get back to the mother energy. There's nothing ugly about being the mother energy. You don't need to be an Atlanta housewife to be desired by a man. Now we're talking about uh, in the... Uh, I think this is uh, in between the Mudlahara and the... Uh, solar plexus. This is a uh, Hedheru energy, even though this is not Hedheru card. This is Ma'at. So this has to do with the imagination. We have to bring balance in our understanding of what love is. We're getting a re... Uh, we're getting a... Uh, we're getting a heart transplant. A spiritual heart transplant, right? We need to learn how to love. Love is love, the balanced love. Divine is trying to teach us about balanced love now. This is in the imagination, okay? I'm sorry, this is um, in the, yeah, it's in the imagination, okay? 
Imagine a divine love that is balanced, where you give and receive an equal balance. You are a whole person that does not give over what you can give without hurting yourself, and you're loving someone that gives nothing more than they can afford to give. They're honest from the beginning, and you're both okay because you're both dependent on the divine and not one another. You choose to be together, okay? You don't need to be together. And so it's a choice instead of a a situationship. God doesn't want us in situationships. Father, Mother, God doesn't want situationships. Okay? No more situationships. They want relationships to relate to one another. Our consciousness. Okay? Sapiosexuality. Divine love. Love that starts here in the mind. To who to measure. What type of Nate do you need that will complement your lifestyle? What you believe in. What you want to do. How Someone that will be supportive and loving. Nowadays, things are so complicated, many of us will probably end up, if you are open to a relationship, being with somebody that is in the field of study or somewhere in the area of work or uh, art or what have you, whatever you're doing, they're, they're going to be in the same area as yourself, okay? What I didn't do was get two cards for these. So that was the solar plexus and the imagination, so let's get those cards. Ancestor spirit guides, please give me, whoa, <laughs> thank you, balance was for the solar plexus, and the original card was love, what did I say, toxic femininity, love out of balance, not the proper kind of love, it's just reiterating the same imbalance and imagination, reiterating the same thing. Not knowing what divine feminine love is. Just, you know, thinking that being, you know, an Atlanta Heights housewife or having, you know, red bottoms and all that is divine feminine. It's not. Okay? That's being what the world calls, you know, a diva or whatever. And there's nothing wrong with being beautiful. There's nothing wrong with it. But if you are being that without knowing what your divine role is, as a feminine expression of the divine mother universe, you, you half made, baby, you half baked, sister. I love you, but you got more work to do. If you're offended by being a mother, then you are not the true divine feminine reflection of the divine mother. You should never, as a woman, be offended about being a mother, ever. That is your purpose, number one, before anything else, motherhood. And so we need to get these upright. It's so funny that they're purple, <laughs> matching each other, right? Purple represents the highest potential, the God energy, and the gold is solar plexus, the will, right? Christ in energy. Also the imagination. So it says, I bring a state of perfect harmony into my world and I do so without judgment, okay? So us as divine feminines, we are meant to alchemize our energy, our emotions, our consciousness, our intention. We do that by staying in touch with the divine and expanding our consciousness and our awareness and being open to both sides of the story, as it said in the crown chakra, okay? So be calling your spirit guides, ancestors, calling the ascended masters, whatever, whoever your guides are, your prophets, and ask them to help you to uh, grow and expand your consciousness. And tell them you're open to seeing both sides of the story, okay? Tell them to help you to accept that you cannot change the past if you're struggling with it, okay? I'm definitely working in that area myself. Ask them to help you to accept the truth, okay, so that you can move forward in your life. What did I say? I said that we often we have to do service with what our everything we go through is not fair, but it's purposeful. It's a purpose in your pain. That's the best I can do. I'm still alchemizing myself. I'm, I, you know, it blew me away when I realized I wasn't going to have what I wanted, what I thought I wanted. Now I'm just serving the divine. I'm doing what I'm told, step by step, the best I can. Am I perfect? Far from it. I'm still learning to walk the line. I, I sidestep sometimes. I'm human. Okay? Service. I feel good when I can help others. Okay? This was at... Uh, Imagination, right? How can you serve? How can you bring balance into this world? 
This is what the divine is asking. What can you do with your pain to bring balance, number four, to humanity? See, when we heal ourselves, we bring stability in the energetic signature of what we're sending out to the universe. We all have to do our work. How can we be of service? This is the work. I'm here in John 9. Do it with all your heart and prosper. Do it just a part and fail. The service is the worship. So let the will of the Most High prevail when we do it with all our heart and prosper. Do it with just a part and fail. Okay? Maybe I'll put that on the, uh, as a link, a link to uh, after the video, the next video. Uh, so this is Ma'at. So it is about, by us bringing balance, Ma'at, divine law, understanding all the laws of the universe, okay? Learning what role the people that were a part of the equation, what they played, what we played, what Stephen's beings played, where we ignored the guidance of the divine. We always get divided from the, guidance from the divine, okay? We just ignore it. We all do. We all do. We can never div uh, blame the divine for anything. It's always, excuse me, I'm getting hot. It's always our fault because we are not listening to the divine guidance. Because we're not what? We're not tuning into the divine enough. Okay? We're listening to everything outside instead of what's inside, and that's the problem. That's how the, the Stephen beings start to take over our consciousness. The, the whispering gens start to whisper, and now huh, we're going to the left. We'll align it. Cars we're to the left, right? Now we need an adjustment. Okay? So this is dealing with our imagination. How can we use what we've been through? to be of service. This will transmute this energy, this pain, this angst, this feeling of regret, or I hate this happened to me. Why me? Be of service. Be of service. Be of service. And as you work, it will release the pain, the, the signature. You can't change what happened, but you can change the energy you hold on to and that you call in and that you presently embody and that you will embody in the future. You do that through providing service. Uh, now we have the Mudlahara, I'm sorry, Mudlahara, which is our Setian energy, giving birth. What are we giving birth to? The ancestors are saying, talk to us. And also connect to Capricorn energy. Capricorn deals with practical ideals, building in this physical world. We're dealing with inner power. They're one of, the ancestors said, let us help you with strengthening your inner power. Okay, bringing balance, the U.S. scepter. So the inner power is the, uh, sorry. The crook, okay, strengthening our spiritual reserves, our identity spiritually. Who are we? Why are we here? What are we doing? What are we supposed to be doing? What is our divine purpose? Uh, go to astrocafe.com if you're not afraid of astrology. I don't know any other way to do it. So maybe some people can find their purpose without it. I love astrology and tarot. It helped me tremendously. You are scepter wellness. What is that? That's balance. That's all. Balance between practical and mundane and spiritual things. That's all. Learning how to operate in both worlds at the same time. Okay? Giving Caesar what Caesar's and giving divine what the divine. That's it. They'll help us and show us how to balance. Flail, how to positively affect this outer world. Using our inner power. Okay? To stay balanced and to affect the, the outer world, the physical world we're in. The ancestors are saying we're here to help you. To hone in on that Capricorn energy of how to do it. Getting the job done. Contact the ancestors for giving birth for your future. Okay, I've already told you in a past video, the ancestors were telling me, and, and contact the Netaru. Remember, these, be, these are all connected to the, to the planets, okay? Okay, the, these, these uh, pictures embody, or these so-called so gods embody, the aspect of manifestation that it attributes to, okay? This is the hub from which these conscious beings come out of, okay? They, we cannot see them in this dimension. Forget it. And if you do, you are a pretty powerful, high spiritual person, okay? Because uh, even I see energy bodies uh, from other dimensions at times, but uh, seeing an actual person, I don't. Or a being, no, I haven't yet. Pride. Pride. This has to do with giving birth. I love myself and I see myself in everyone. Divine wants us to help uh, to, 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 to develop a new pride, a divine pride, not foolish pride. 
We've had a lot of foolish pride now. People working out of the ego. Divine wants us to work out of the divine identity now. Okay? We are interconnected. We are one. We all have the same attributes of the divine within us. Father, Mother, God. We all are connected to the Neteru. The power of God's nature within our spirit. These are the governors. They're like our celestial uncles and aunts that are like, hey, no, 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 little girl, little boy. Don't, I don't care how old you are. When it comes to them, they are the uncle. They are older than us. I don't care if you're 99. They are benefic. They're in the other dimension. Okay, we were ascended. We wouldn't be in a body. When you learn everything you need to learn, you leave this physical form. So don't get mad at me and tell me, oh, I'm this. No, when you're, when you're beyond this world, you're going to leave. So if you're still, you still got a fleshly body, respect the governors, okay? Okay, they're higher than we are. And if you humble yourself, they will help you. They will help you, I promise. I love myself and I see myself in ever, everyone. We all are one big human family. And the net to rule are the power of God's nature that we have been given. We've been bestowed with powers. Our gifts are not carnal, but mighty in pulling down the strongholds. Strongholds are vain what? Imaginations. Vain imaginations. The divine doesn't want us to have vain imaginations about love, okay? The first love we should be trying to strengthen is the love within ourselves and the divine, not somebody else. So if you don't truly love yourself and you don't know who you are, you're giving, your somebody, you're giving someone a love that's half-baked. Okay, your husband or your wife is not supposed to be your mom or your dad. Now, you can mother one another at times, but they're not supposed to be your mom or dad. That is a, a toxic template that is not divine. Okay? Father God is fully embodied of his masculine energy. Mother God is fully embodied of her masculine energy. They want us to have divine pride, not foolish pride. That's what they want us to give birth to. Seeing ourselves in one another, not looking at these physical flesh forms, but seeing ourselves as spirits first, living in a human form, okay? Operating in both masculine and feminine energy, okay? Uh, going through the shadow, entering into the light through studying the darkness, what's in the darkness, okay? Mastering these aspects of divine power within ourselves that we use to manifest in the earth realm, okay? Mastering the lessons of our own personal life, clearing up our ancestral karma, okay? Creating a new template for the future generations because there's a lot of lies hidden in families. It's another thing the divine has told me. So we got two more cards. Base chakra, not quite sure what the name of that is. It's the base chakra. It's at the base of, in between your legs, but at the base. You know what that is. I'm not going to get into the details. Y'all know what that is. One more for the base, please. One more for the base, please. Give me one for Geb. Thank you. Worry. <laughs> All right. They said a lot of us are worrying. Instead of worrying, we need to start working, working on the inner. See, you keep wanting to affect the outside. You're not doing the inner work. Stop worrying and get to work. I am learning that worry doesn't change an outcome. Many of us are just sitting around worrying. Woe is me. Why, 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 why? I did that. I do that sometimes. But they're saying stop worrying and start working. That's what they're saying. We all complain about what's going on in the earth and this and that. Well, this and we're sitting around fighting and all that. <laughs> Look at the bottom of the deck. Patience in reverse. You guys don't have patience. They're telling on you. Look at that. You're impatient and you're worrying. Patience in the reverse. I accept that everything happens in divine order. It's going to take time to change our world, family. Give me one more card for this last row. I'm not quite sure what this was. Courage. They're, I mean, they're here. I love you, ancestors, spirit guides, ascended masters, father, mother, God. Look at this. Courage. I find the inner strength to, uh, strength, inner strength to face fear with confidence. Going into the terra agnita is... Uh, or in, 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 what is it, terra incognito? Or Going into the subconscious mind is scary. Facing our past pains. Studying our ancestral patterns. The family karma, the hidden secrets, all that. Sometimes they, you, people don't want to talk. You have to, you have to talk to the divine about it. They'll reveal it to you. I found out so much about my family that they have not opened their mouth to say anything about. 
That's the gift of spirit. When you when you have a connection to ancestors and spirit, heaven, you don't have to have anybody open their mouth. Because why? You can't do anything with people that are out of alignment and have their own vain imaginations. There are many of us that will be having that. They don't want to walk in divine feminine nurturing and love. They have a vain idea of the will, their own will. My, not They're not saying, not my will, thy will, like Christ said. They're saying, no, my will over yours, God. I don't care what you want. I'm not going to be divine feminine love. I'm going to be toxic divine. I'm going to be toxic. I'm going to be toxic love. Masculine's love is feminine. So this refers to you too. I'm going to teach her a lesson. You do listen to me. Still feminine energy. Love is feminine energy. Right? Flexibility. Studying a person's situation or thing to see what is needed to change it. Not what you think somebody needs to learn because you're a big boss and you're this and you're that. Negative feminine energy. Negative love. Feminine en Love is feminine energy. Because you think you are you. I'm so I'm me. Negative Heru. Right? Uncontrolled fire energy. You want to hurt and burn them out. You want to hurt somebody. You want to teach them a lesson. Right? That's negative toxic feminine energy, which is basically an uncontrolled masculine energy. It's like a force. Like, I'm my way. My way. Right? This is what I have for you guys. I'm going to do another video, and I'm going to expand on this again. This is going to be a part two. We'll see what comes out. This took a long time because yesterday I just did the basics on which natures they were saying to focus on in the month of April regarding each area of manifestation. Okay? That's why this took so long. It's a two-hour video. Haven't done this. These others that I may do here might be about 10, 20 minutes. I'm not going to be here long, okay? We're just going to see what the Ascended Masters have to say. Um, and I'll probably pick uh, one. I wonder where my Rider weight deck is. Strange. Hmm. Um, we're going to pick one... Uh, one tarot card, okay? Because these are natural cards. These are oracle cards, okay? And the rest of these are just like guidance cards, okay? But we will pick one tarot card for each one of the uh, netters, and we're going to see forgiveness at the bottom. <laughs> you, divine is telling on some of y'all. Mm -mm, you don't want to forgive. I'm done. That's right there in your face. Yeah, you're not forgiving. That's why I said not everybody's going to change and do this work. Some of you guys are going to die like, hell no. I will never forgive you. Forgiveness, I acknowledge that harboring resentment blocks the flow of love. One thing I want to tell you, many of us are struggling with forgiveness. When you are evaluating who to forgive, what to forgive, why, and how, please be uh aware of the health of the person. You can forgive, but if you're dealing with somebody that has a prone, a prone connection to narcissistic tendencies or deceit, you can love them, but you better love them from afar because they will hurt you again, okay? Don't forget that. Forgive them, but do not by any means let them around you unless they prove to you that they have changed. That means that they reach out to you. You don't chase them, okay? Otherwise, you're going to repeat a cycle. This is Sister Toffee. I love you guys. I'll be back in two and two. Uh, I think I'm going to have a little bit of coffee. And uh, be good to myself and love on myself. I'll see you guys in a minute, okay? Uh, this baby right here needs some love. I got to give myself some love. I need a two and two. I'll be back. Bye for now. <laughs>